Hey, my name is Omar, and this is Tomiko and Friends. This week, we're making some karaage, or Japanese fried chicken, along with onigiri, or rice balls. Let's begin. We're using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Cut them into bigger cubes, and then place them inside of a mixing bowl. Inside of this mixing bowl, you're going to add the following ingredients. Sake, soy sauce, and ginger. You can then salt and pepper them. I should have, but I didn't because of the amount of soy sauce that we were putting in. Once everything is incorporated, mix within the bowl and then put inside of your refrigerator. If you feel like you need more marinade, then add more marinade. Let your chicken marinate for 30 minutes to an hour or overnight. Next, get three cups of sushi rice and add them to a bowl. Wash your rice until all the starch goes clear. I did this off camera. Once your rice is washed, add just enough water to cover up the first knuckle of your finger. Place your bowl in a rice cooker and then follow your rice cooker's ingredients to make fluffy rice. Remove your chicken from the refrigerator. This is where we're going to flour our chicken, but you don't have to use flour. I decided to use half cornstarch and half rice flour for my flouring process. However, you can use regular flour or whatever you really want. Here, you're going to take a few pieces of your chicken and lightly coat it in flour. Remove your chicken from the flour and then place onto a dry tray. Repeat this until majority of your tray is full of chicken. Now, bring your chicken over to your stove. Add a liter of cooking oil. I would recommend either canola oil or peanut oil as they have a high smoking temperature. When your oil hits 325 degrees or when you can put flour in and it sizzles a little, you can then start to add a few pieces to your medium pot to fry. Fry until your chicken pieces come out golden or slightly dark brown. Remove from the oil once done and then place inside of a container that has paper towels or newspaper underneath. As your chicken comes out, lightly salt them. Continue this until all of your chicken pieces are done frying. While you are frying your chicken, turn your attention back to your rice, which should be done by now. Remove it and then bring over to the oven. Heat a medium sized pan. As your pan is heating, we're going to go ahead and form our onigiri. Onigiri usually takes the shape of a triangle, kind of like a rice ball. So, wetting your hands with some water, grab some onigiri, which will be hot, and try and form them into a triangle. If not, you can buy some triangle molds like I did on Amazon. If you want to take it a step further, you can add some things on the inside. Sometimes you can add karaage or you can add pickled radish, which is what I added here. Or if you're fancy, you can add some mozzarella. Additionally, you can make what is also called oshizushi, which is like a rectangular sushi ball. I also had a mold for this and I used this with the pickled radish because it was able to stay together easier. Once all your rice balls are formed together, transfer to the medium pan. Toast the rice on all sides for a little bit. You could even go a little further and add soy sauce and make it a little bit crispy and salty. Once everything is done frying and grilling, remove from the pans and remove from the hot oil and transfer over to the table. And there you have it. One of my favorite Japanese dishes, onigiri and karaage. If you like this video, give us a like and comment down below. What do you want to see us make next? As always, there are a bunch of YouTube videos on our YouTube page, Tamago and Friends, where you can find more recipes like this. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.